In this tutorial we're going to show you how to install and take care of the initial configuration of W3 Title Cache. To do this you're going to need administrator access to your WordPress website. To get started we're going to go into the WordPress dashboard. Then we just need to go to plugins and add new. And we just need to search for W3 Title Cache. And it should be the first result in the search list. Yep, there we go. So we click install now and we just confirm we do want to install it and now WordPress will go and download that for us. So the plugin's been downloaded and installed so all we need to do is click activate plugin now. So with the plugin activated you can see on the left hand side in the menu but down at the bottom below the SEO plugin we now have a performance menu item so let's go and check that out. Here we're just looking at the dashboard. Now what we can first see at the top is the ability to upgrade the plugin. Uh, this plugin is primarily free but there are some features that you can't get unless you update and they're the more advanced features so we're not going to worry about those for the moment. The next degree of option we have here is to perform a compatibility check and additionally in this area we can choose to empty the various caches that we have on the website. So what I'm going to do first is just run a compatibility check. And that's done. And as you can see, it provides a legend at the top. And then it shows you what you've got access to. So you've got FTP, multi-byte string support, curl is installed, so Zlib, which is what we need for gzip compression. Uh, opcode cache is not installed, nor is memcache or HTML tidy. Though we do have MIME type detection and the hash function installed, which as you can see is required for NetDNA and MacCDN purge support. So with all this in mind, we're pretty much good to go. So I'm just going to click close now. And now what we've got here, we have the primary dashboard area for W3TC. First off, you've got some premium services that you can buy or subscribe to if that's something you wanted to do. We also have the ability to share the fact that we are using this and you know they've provided links so that you can put that in a you know in the footer of your website or a sidebar or whatever if you would like to do that. Uh, and then like the last few options we have here are regarding New Relic. Uh, New Relic is a monitoring service. So it's really only useful if you have a really, really busy website and you want to find out what parts of your website aren't running very quickly so that you can go and change that. But that's a more advanced feature. So we won't talk about that too much. Uh, regarding Mac CDN, that's just a CDN you can sign up to and configure to work with W3 Total Cache. Uh, of course, you can use almost any CDN uh, that you would like. And finally, we have Google Page Speed. So you can actually go and set up Google Page Speed in conjunction with W3 Total Cache, and it will continue to take stock of the speed of your website. But that's really the, the getting up and getting going with W3 Total Cache, you know, just getting used to some of the words we're going to be talking about here and, you know, the, the topics to discuss. So. We're going to wrap this tutorial up before we move on to some more in detail tutorials. So if you have any questions about installing W3 Total Cache and you know your compatibility checks and you know any of these features you see here in the dashboard, please feel free to ask in the comments below.